And we're live here on Facebook. Like to welcome those of you listening in podcast land. And also like to f- uh, welcome my co host, Rich. Yeah, thanks for uh, joining us today, wherever you're listening to us from Facebook Live, YouTube, or even on your favorite podcast platform. You forgot to welcome the people listening on YouTube. I listen. I mentioned you the YouTube them. people. You did, okay. I did. I, I said thank you for listening to those watching us on the YouTube. Okay. A so, second time. Yes. Um, so, Rich, how was your week? Um, Not too bad. Still learning a new job, working some extra hours because just to have some more training time. You get that that uh, paycheck yet? Um, we get up. We get that first paycheck. I think, um, or at least knowing what my new pay rate is going to be. I think this week. Okay. The paycheck that hits this week, plus some back pay because they forgot to nice. activate that. <laughs> nice. Let's go for it. Um, Fun time. So. Uh, so you probably Mike, how are you doing? You're probably pretty tired working two different jobs, but also all the other stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so I'm doing all right. Back to normal in a couple weeks. So I'm doing all right. Uh, came to the Quad Cities for all of twenty less than twenty four. I was in the Quad Cities less than twenty four hours. So you probably spent more time on the road than you did in the Quad Cities. No, I spent about. 10 hours on the road maybe 11 hours on the road and I spent I had to have spent more than 11 hours because I was in the Quad Cities like 10 p.m. the night before through uh, 4 p.m. the following day so Mm. okay yeah but it was still it was a quick trip not not a reason I want to come down ever again, but I know that at some point it may have to happen again, but I'd prefer not to. Um, had to be at a funeral. Um, Solomon did an amazing job honoring his mother. Um, got to see the rest of the family, give hugs all around, make sure people know that I love them and uh, I'm here for them if they want. Um, just got to, got to bless and minister to uh, friends of ours that we don't get to see often enough, but that are still family. So, Good. um, rough, rough reason for being there, but I'm glad I was able to be there for them. And, uh, okay. we continue to pray for God's peace and comfort as they, uh, continue to go through the, the next few, the next year, that first year of losing a loved one kind of is the worst. So, yeah. Uh, are you back at work yet, Mike? I've been back at work since, uh, since before last week. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I've been back at work. That would be nice to get a whole week worth of work in so I can get an actual real paycheck. But, you know, uh, life's a little crazy sometimes. So. Um, but that's enough of us. Let's talk about the show. Uh, we have not as full of a show, which is why we kind of pushed some things back to this point. Um we have our final medal counts of the the Olympics, um, and uh, we have to talk about the MLB and what's going on with all the stuff going on there. We got a whole bunch of stuff to go there. Uh, some stuff came out about the Tyler Skaggs deal uh, death and uh, some fake Twitter feeds, and uh, maybe, just maybe, if MLB can get their stuff together with the Players Association... We might have baseball at a stadium we, that we've never seen baseball in our lifetime. So, Rich, That's what else correct. do we got? Uh, we'll be going into uh, talking about NASCAR. So, we got to give you the recap of the Daytona 500 and our predictions for the Auto Club. Yep. For Auto Club, uh, as well as talking some quick hits. It could include uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, the XFL getting into the news, and uh, Jawan Howard's post game antics. Yeah, all that and more, but let's roll the intro! Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich.
and we're back. Okay, so Rich, before we get into that, we know our first finalist. Oh, do we know both of them now? We do. do. We know both the finalists going into the last week of uh, our food challenge. Not our. It's not our last week, but it's our second to last week because next week's poll is going to be the third place uh, finisher. Oh. We got to determine okay. who gets for third. All right, I'll have to adjust the poll because I already made the finals to go live. Oh no, no! I figure we'll do the finals this week and then the okay. third place next week. Nobody, okay. nobody pays attention to wh which one it actually is, but we'll oh, okay. we'll do that. Uh, look for that to go live about two thirty today. Uh, so last week's poll question was brisket versus pulled pork. We have some comments, and uh, we have a, a pretty solid result. We do. We um, did get a pretty solid result. While you're, load while you're loading the comments, Mike, I went with brisket. Yep. Because, I, I mean, as I mentioned the last time we discussed brisket on the poll, I don't think I've ever had a bad serving of brisket. And the only thing that you gave as an exception to that is getting fa a fast food brisket sandwich from Arby's. Yep. which I've never had so I can't I can't comment on that and your dad Joe Hart said to pass on it yeah uh, I would agree pass on that don't don't get that that's not what they do it's gross um, I also voted for brisket um, but we had a few people uh, we had a few comments um, one from your father on okay. the official poll question and that was brisket can get can be slightly messy. Slightly and, yes. And, and you you commented on that, right? I said, yes. So can pulled pork. Yeah, I, I would agree with you, Mike. I think pulled pork is messier than brisket. Yep. I mean, the only thing that's probably going to come off of that brisket sandwich is probably going to be like, if depending on how much sauce you're putting on the bun. If Rich, any. you don't need sauce on good brisket. Now, uh, we also had one over on our balls and sticks actual page where we shared it uh friend of the show brandon close who has been one of a good friend of mine since uh high school uh commented that too many people mess up brisket now rich you've not had that i've had a couple bad briskets nothing terrible but i have had it a few times here and there um Let's let me get over there. Yeah, he said too many people mess up brisket. I I liked it because it's somebody interacting with the uh, conversation. Um, and uh, I mean, we had a lot of votes on both sides of this aisle. Mm -hmm. We had we had fourteen votes on this one. Five of them went to pulled pork. Nine of them went to brisket. Brisket moves on to the finales for the tailgate food showdown. The third place game or poll will be in it will be next week and that is going to be pulled pork versus burgers burgers yeah yeah it, it is burgers but the finals that poll is going to go live at 2 30 i pushed it out because i wasn't sure when you would be back from your men's breakfast if you'd want to have lunch before doing the show so uh it's going to go live at 2 30 yep uh bratwurst versus brisket will be the three and the one seed yep the three and the one seed so uh, thanks for everybody that has been voting in these polls. Uh, we're going to try to keep going with some good polls to get you to keep voting. We, we have lots of things. Uh, we, have, we want that engagement. Um, and uh, we, like, we like reading your comments. So thank you, Brandon and Mark, for commenting and uh, just engaging with us. Uh, we like your comments. Just because we don't necessarily agree all the time doesn't mean we don't appreciate the comments. We like we we live in the land of freedom, where you can mm -hmm. disagree with somebody, and still love them, and not lock them in jail or invade their country. But we're not talking politics right now, so. No. All right, so Winter Olympics, Mike. Yeah. We're done. The current the Winter Olympics are wrapped up. Well, the Pure Olympics well, are going on. Kind right of. Now. We have to say okay. kind of. The Winter Olympics are passed up in standard olympics we are still we still have the paralympics which has 
Some of your favorite sports are still going on, Rich. Sliding sports are still happening. There's there's uh, that uh, the the ice sled hockey stuff, which is really cool to watch. Um, there's I'm sure there's probably a Paralympic version of speed skating or something of the sort. Um, I don't know. I haven't looked at it, but but the standard Olympics, which gets real coverage, whereas the Paralympics doesn't really, which is sad, but it's true. Um, the medals are or the medals have all been given out, and here is the breakdown. Rich, you want to give us the breakdown of who did what, or are you not ready for it yet? Um, I, I have it. I was expecting you to take it. Okay, I got it. I so Norway, uh, in the total, we're gonna go total medal count, and then I'll break down the gold medal count as well. Okay. Norway wins the total medal count with thirty-seven golds. The ROC takes thirty-two. Um, with an asterisk behind that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I think we talked about it last week a little bit, but we'll talk yeah, about we it do. some more. Um, Germany with 27, Canada with 26, and the U.S. of A, 25. So the gold medal count. Who cares about any other medals than the gold medals? Number one was Norway at 16. Number two, Germany with 12. Number three... China. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and number four, the U.S. is of A. Um, so. Uh, so you said the ROC has an asterisk, Mike. What do you mean by that? So there are, there is at least one, and there is potentially multiple uh, athletes that are being investigated for using performance enhancing drugs and ha having a positive test for said uh, performance enhancing drugs um, they were allowed to compete but that did not determine whether or not they won the or they their medals will stand hmm. that has to be a different investigation so um, I don't so understand how, many... how that works but so if the Russian if, if the Russian Olympic Committee or Russia ha keeps having their athletes getting these doping scandals, at what point do you... So they've already... So they're to the point now that it's not Russia competing. It's the Russian Olympic Committee. At what point do you not allow any athletes from Russia to compete? It's a good question. I mean... Um, if this keeps going on. Yeah, I would think that we're we're near to the point that that needs to be a thing that happens, but we do. Who knows? Like that's that's a very good question, but again, we don't know the whole extent of it. So, who knows? All right. So the next Olympics will be summer twenty twenty four in Paris. Yep. And then the Winter Olympics come back in 2026 in Milan, Italy. Yeah, those will be fun. I'm looking forward to those. So, Rich, do you see what's coming up ahead? Is it a left turn, Mike? Yes, it is. And after that? Probably another left turn, Mike. Yep, because we're heading into the NASCAR corner. Presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Moline, Illinois, down on 5th Street. Check them out for all your sports memorabilia needs. Either in store, in person, or or online on their eBay store. Once again, that's Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. So, Rich, oh, Mike, last week, what's up? Oh, they're actually on Fifth Avenue in Moline, Mike. Oh, Fifth, Fifth Avenue. Avenue, not Street. Oh, sorry. I don't live in the Quad Cities anymore. I'm, I should know what our sponsor's address is, but I don't. Um, so, uh, next, or so last week we had the the opening. Um, NASCAR is slightly backwards from most sports. Uh, most sports, you think the biggest race of the year or the biggest event of the year is the ending of it. But NASCAR starts out their season with the most important race of the year or the most known race of the year by way of NASCAR goes. And that's the Daytona 500. So... Um, then, and there was some controversy going on about it. I don't know how much you watched. I watched pretty much all of it other than sleeping. Um, 
one person came out of that race looking real bad and making some people angry. All right. Give us that person, Mike. Brad Keselowski. Uh, Brad Keselowski. Okay. Yeah, Brad Keselowski dumped a few people last week that caused a couple big races and did it in ways that wasn't wouldn't be considered acceptable and uh, earned him some uh, hatred around the league. Hmm. So, yeah. So this was post-race or before the race? No, this is during the race. Changes. This is during oh. the race. He the first wreck, the first big wreck, not the first wreck, but the first big wreck that happened right at the end of stage one, uh, he caused. Um, he caused two basically major wrecks, and uh, dumped people and caused them to spin out, trying to do stuff that he shouldn't be doing, and uh, really, really made some enemies uh, mm. out on the track. So, uh, look for when they get to places like Daytona and Martinsville to uh to, or bristol and martinsville look for him to maybe even talladega probably not talladega you don't tend to you don't tend to cause problems and you don't tend to wreck people at 200 miles an hour but mm. when you are driving 50 or when you're going around a corner people tend to dump you real quick when you're only going like 50 60 because to those guys that's not fast okay so he he caused quite a few incidents and some major wrecks in the last week or last week and really upset a bunch of people um rich did i I know we talked about it we both took nascar naps in the show or during the race yeah Um, i think mine was somewhere in that first stage before the wreck yeah i know i missed the wreck but i saw the replays yep while watching the rest of the race um took out denny hamlin by the way he finished in 37th yeah, my pick of Alex Bowman probably didn't do too much better as he only got 24th. Uh, your race winner was Austin Cedric. Did you enjoy the race? I did. It good. was a good race. Yeah. Um, I mean, from the fantasy side, I didn't really enjoy it. Cause it the yes. my lineup just didn't work out. But, Speaking uh, of which, we got to give a shout out. Solomon Stroop winning the week uh, in Fantasy NASCAR. Yeah. Um, yes, he got 203 points. Uh, Tony in the Funk House got one. That's apparently not Tony. It's not Tony. I don't know who that is. I think that might be Lacey or one of Solomon's family members. I don't know. but The Funk House. The Funk so House. We'll, we'll stop referring to him as Tony, but the Funk House got 165. Newcomer Easers came in third with 156. Mike, I was in fourth with 131. You're bringing up the rear with 124. I'm ending the. I'm starting this year like I ended last year. But it's okay, Mike. You you don't want. I I still stand by our strategy of not not investing too much in the Daytona race because you don't necessarily want to waste a use on a guy maybe like like a Chase Elliott or a Chase Elliott or a Kyle Busch or a Kyle Larson in a race where where a wreck happens or even denny hamlin yeah. for that matter you've only you can only swap in a garage driver once so it comes down to do you want to is that new this year well no no i'm saying I mean you only have one garage spot so yeah. if you had all three of those guys hamlin elliot larson or bush you could only have one of them wrecked you can only save one of them by putting them into the garage yeah so it's it's been one of those things this year where um, it's just been, I mean, it's the start of the year. You got to you gotta save your usage uh, and uh, get there eventually. Well, yeah, great, great work by uh, Solomon and the Funk House. I don't think I've seen in the years that I've played Fantasy NASCAR, I don't think I've seen that many points scored yeah. on Daytona most of the time. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good pick this year. Good job on him. Um, getting those uh picks out and uh making sure he gets uh at least in first place for the beginning of the year so so we got a little bit of work to do we got a little bit of a hole to dig out of being on 130 being in the 130s and the 120s yep when uh with the leader being up in the 200s but um it's still it's still a long there's still a long ways to go you could have races where people forget to update picks where where the bonus picks don't get made yeah so there's ways to, to, to dig out of it. There's still time to join our fantasy league if you want to. You, if you're uh, listening to the show and you want to join, 
Um, just go over to our Facebook pages, either Fans of Balls and Sticks or the Balls and Sticks fan page, uh, fail Balls and Sticks Facebook page, uh, to find the link to our league to be like Ezer and join our I mean, uh, fantasy NASCAR. It is in our description. It's in the description. So whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on uh, on podcast land, um, it's in our it's in the description. You can find follow that tiny URL is right there. You can get there and it, you can watch us and, and follow us and all those things. So join us uh, in that. Um, right. This week we are going out to the opposite end of the country. We're going from Florida to California as we're heading to Fontana for the first time in two years. That's right. They were last out in Fontana pre-COVID shutdown. Yep. And they didn't go there last year. Or the year before. Uh, so, or the year before that, I guess. So it's the Wise Power 400 out in Fontana. Yeah. So, Rich, uh, do you have any advice this week for Fontana people? Oh man, this is this is going back to your early days of picking fantasy racers, so you might not have all the answers yet. I don't, not really. Um, okay, I'll, I'll it's give a you some advice. Track. It's a highway yeah. track, so that's really the only thing that I know that I got out of the article that I read on how on how to best set up my fantasy lineup for this week. So it's it's a my if I remember it's like a mile and three quarters. I think, but it's that mile and a half, mile and three quarters, mile and a quarter track. So it's it's a f- similar to the the quote unquote cookie cutter tracks, but it's also a little bit different than all of them. So watch out for that. So Rich, going in, who are you picking this week as your winner? I'm gonna go with Kyle Busch. He never does well for us when we pick him on air. So in that case, Especially I'm for me, making sure I'm taking him out of my lineup. My advice is if Rich picks him as the winner, take him out of your lineup. Take it. For so what I'm, you will. yeah, I'm picking him because he has a good track history. Yep. Um, out of Fontana, um, and there's practice. So yeah, um, I am gonna pick Chase Elliott. Um, look for him to continue his tear, his his, him and Hendricks winning ways. Uh, this year and uh, look for Chase Elliott to do well Um, so yeah out in California we're on our west coast swing like they always do like they used to always do now they're going to pick it up a little bit more Rich anything else on the NASCAR corner before we head out and turn left on the diamond all right so we were both watching the race and we kind of watched the clash as well what'd you think of Tony Stewart as an announcer I thought he did amazingly well yeah I loved I it. Too. I liked it. He didn't really in, interject too much stuff into the, like the, he was rooting for his three cars that he had in the race to do well. I think there was, I only remember like the one when they got on, got on the radio with Kevin Harvick, when he told him, Hey, you try to keep it in one piece today. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that, that was really it. That was a good joke. Good joke with the, with his driver, Kevin Harvick, but I thought he did well. Um, Matt Kenseth is going to be in the booth in Fontana. Nice. No, I, I like it. I don't mind. Uh, I, I think he did a great job. I'm looking forward to hearing him more this year um, and getting getting him more involved. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, he, I, yeah, he had a good two-week two week stretch with uh, The Clash yep. and Daytona. So, uh, Matt Kenseth is going to be in the booth for Fontana. And Danica Patrick comes in to be the third voice on the broadcast and she's going to do phoenix and las vegas Ooh, that'll be fun yeah they haven't announced it seems to me that it could be like a week a week to week or two week stretch with a third announcer in the booth so yeah good for fox to kind of get some new voices in there and try out maybe give some people that maybe don't want to commit to a full season a chance to get in the booth to see what they think of it i also uh, like before committing to it i also really like that they're getting getting fresher uh some of these fresher people in uh that have raced in the last 10 years even um Mm -hmm. getting really excited sharing their excitement with everybody else it's going to be great uh let's watch it let's i i hope it goes well for matt kenseth danica patrick will be exciting uh it'll be a great year so with that being said 
Let's head out of the NASCAR corner presented by Triple I Sports Cars Incorporated. Fifth Avenue, Moline. Check yes. them out for all your sports memorabilia needs at their store in person or online on their eBay store. Once again, that's Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Okay, let's head over and keep making laughs as we run around the diamond because nobody else is. That's right. Well, at least not officially. Yeah, there's I mean, some, I think there's some player run. Um, yep. And there's player run there's training. College baseball is happening. So if you still need baseball, check out college baseball. Um, and you can go every week to your little leagues. Uh, little league teams are get, probably getting ready to, to start doing their stuff here in the next still, month or so. I think it's still a little bit early for little league or even um, high school ball. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I don't... Still a little early. I think it's they're, they're starting out. their training. So if you have a kid I'll of give that you age. Training. I'll give you training. If you have a so, kid of uh, that age, look for that. But uh, first, I want to highlight something. I've never ahead. been bothered by fake news before. Until last night as I'm driving home from work, my phone pops up with a notification that says MLB something. And I didn't see who it was, but it said MLB something. And then the part of the tweet that I got was MLB and MLB Players Association uh, agreed to a new CBA. That's all I got to see. So I'm like, it was in, on my initial, like I was stopped at a stop sign, getting ready to turn. I'm like, I don't need to, I'll read it when I get home, but that's exciting. We're going to have something to talk about tomorrow because it's kind of a, in that lean time between football ending and basketball starting or baseball starting and all the other sports getting ramped up, really ramped up during their playoffs. Uh, we have NASCAR, but that's about it. That's really for Rich and I, that's kind of all we have right now. And I was getting exciting because we can finally talk about the CBA. And then I get home and I read, this will cancel the next two years and kick the Tampa Bay Rays out of the out of MLB forever. And I'm like, seriously? Yeah. You, you get me all excited because I'm going to have NASCAR back. And then you take it away just like that. How terrible of a human being are you? Yeah, I mean, that's not even close. I mean, if they had put the headline out there, "Big MLB News," that's it. Sounds to me like it was totally like a like a clickbait, watch and retweet, or he was trying to get maybe improve the algorithm for getting up there on Twitter feeds by getting people commenting about how upset they were. It worked, or how fake it was. It, it worked, worked obviously because it got it got it got to a point where it sent a notification to my phone. Because it knows I care about MLB. I was ticked. I was mm. angry when I got home. So. Yeah. So no really. So that's the fake news that came out about baseball. No real. No new real news to cover. They've canceled another week of spring training or exhibition games. Yep. And the owners have set a deadline for end of the end of the day Monday to have an agreement in place or they're going to start announcing postponement of games while the players association supposedly sees that as a soft deadline because they feel that if they feel that they can just do makeup games as part of double headers or at tag them on at the back end of the season which the owners have said no we're not going to do that yep and this is where this is when it's going to start affecting pocketbooks, because the players losing games that they play means that they don't get paid for those games. Yes. So that's when it starts affecting their actual pocketbooks. So it's yeah, I hope either to because they're supposed to have meetings today, right? I think they're meeting almost yeah, every I, day now. Because I think they are meeting every day. They've. I mean, do you think the deadline, whether it's a soft deadline or a hard deadline, will make a difference? No, but I think it – yes and no. I think it doesn't actually make a difference, but I think it makes – a. I think people will see it and think that they need to do something. Hopefully it works. I, honestly, I just hope that it works. 
yeah the new really no new details they're trying to push through a lottery system for the draft okay to supposedly deter the whole tanking thing yeah or to d to at least give people that it, i guess i guess maybe control tanking how many teams are just taking the approach of let's lose as many games to get a high draft pick and the players are still wanting something that will allow uh bigger raises yep. or bigger raises for to get people into uh arbitration quicker yeah which obviously the the owners don't want because then they got to pay their younger players sooner yeah which will hurt parity in the game it just will the bigger thing is I mean, we know we already know now that we're stuck with a universal DH. It's pretty much been an agreed upon thing now. Mm -hmm. I hate it, but I'm the old man that's sitting in the corner saying, get off my lawn. And I'm okay with that. But it seems like we're getting closer. There's just a few sticking points that we're, where we're at. So hopefully soon we get to that... Hopefully next week we're talking about this new CBA and that we have an actual agreement and we're good to go and baseball is going to start relatively close to on time. Yeah. So, but being the one thing I've, I've been almost been surprised about is that if the owners are saying, no, we're going to take away MLB games, why isn't the players, the players associate say, well, if we're going to miss a week, why don't we just cut a week off of spring training and have a shortened spring training? I think... And this is what the the owners of, owners are going to say. Uh, we don't want to cut a week of spring training because we don't want to risk injury to the players. That's what they're going to say, because they're going to say that it's in the best interest of the players to not to not cut spring training because spring training's what you need to get healthy before the season starts. Yeah, that, that's what's going to that's how that's going to come about. But yeah, but in today's day, but in today's time, a player isn't. It isn't like the olden days where spring training is literally a way to get them back into playing shape because with because now you do, you have players getting paid so much they don't need to work side jobs or oh yeah i mean decent jobs like they did in the past these guys aren't these guys aren't throwing beef around at a packing house or doing any of that stuff they're not playing side hustle or this or that you're right it's they're not taking the off season off no, no. Sports have become a year-round event. Anybody in the sport is working out basically all year round. Yeah, you might get to go do go to Cancun, but while you're in Cancun, guess who you brought with you? You brought a personal trainer so you can work so he can work you out in the morning and then you go have time with the family. Or you make sure yeah. that there's a batting cage nearby so you can take 100 swings in the morning. Or something like that. You're doing something every day to stay in shape. Because or you're, you're making sure that that resort you go to has a pretty good, pretty good quality weight room, so you can yeah. do something. Yeah, you're not, you're not. It, I mean, unless your name is Big Ben Roethlisberger, and then you don't work out ever, even in the season, I guess. So I don't know. That that would be my idea of it. That if they're going to say, no, nope, we need to cancel a week, of, a week of regular season, then you go, all right, why don't we just not have as long of a spring training? Why do we need to have a week of exhibition games? But that also loses money for the owners because then you're not having spring training games at the spring training complex either. Yeah, and the bigger one is, is that you're not making – I mean, either way, they're not going to do that. Again, like I said, they're going to make the argument that they need um, – they need the the extra time for uh for um for the uh for they they need the extra time to make sure everybody stays healthy um yeah. so um a couple more news items rich you just shared something with me at the beginning right before the show started uh, about the MLB saying we're going to go to a different stadium this year you want to let me know they about it could be they could. They they are looking into the possibility of doing a game at Hinchcliffe Stadium, which is in Patterson, New Jersey. Um, how that's kind of linked to the game is that that is one of the few remaining stadiums still standing that played host to Negro League games. I like it. 
I so, like it. Let's supposedly they are the community is putting money money into restoring the field. So it probably so I'm, I could imagine MLB was probably going to contribute to that and maybe hold a game there. Yeah. So that'd be kind of neat. I think that's neat that uh, uh, MLB is going to these non-traditional places and doing special event games like this, just like you went to the Field of Dreams game, and that looks like it's going to stick around. I think you could easily see... Are you, a... it, did you enter? Did you? Are you going to enter the draft this year, to uh, the lottery for tickets? Sure. Okay, if I call you the day before, are you going to buy? T- are you going to pay for a ticket and come with me? I think I can do that. Okay, because it's going to be the Cubs. Like you realize, this year is the Cubs. Yeah. Okay. And I know if you get the tickets, you're taking your wife, and I don't get to go, and that's okay. I get it. But actually, my wife might go this year. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Um, but no, I I totally love it. It bring it to small areas. These new these venues we haven't seen used, uh, and especially. That are or just so historic. Histo- I was just going to say, places that are so historically valued. Um, I do think they need to get that Cooperstown uh, venue up to snuff so they can host an actual game, not just a, a Hall of Fame game, um, but have an actual game there uh, that actually counts for something. That'd be great, too. Okay, mm-hmm. Rich, um, one final thing in that we should we were going to talk about last week but we got super busy uh eric k has been found guilty uh the drug dealer that provided tyler skaggs with the drugs that he's Ultimately been found guilty for the death. overdose yeah um i think that's great um i think it's i i think it's good that that they've done that i hope that they can they do that for everybody that ods cuz at some point that's a problem that's part of the problem of these drugs but there's other people's in people's involved in this uh that you brought up uh you want to talk about those guys too yeah it within the the testimony um former angels took the stand to talk about the issue cj crone mike moran cam Boselton and Blake Parker testified of their own opiate use, but did not say they ever distributed the drugs to anybody else. But they said that Tyler Skaggs introduced them to Eric Kay, who was the communications director for the Angels at the time. But one player, one noteworthy player, did distribute to um, Eric Skagg, Tyler Skaggs as well, which is Matt Harvey the dark night yeah um so he could be facing a suspension if a team signs him this year yeah that's he's currently a free agent that's a lot of disturbing that there was a lot of disturbing stuff to come out of that but yeah i agree um scary thoughts um hopefully we get uh it's sad because it's ruining another family's life but people need to be held accountable. And in sports, we don't hold. We're standing here talking. I mean, we just had the 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 uh, Hall of Fame games announced, right? And we mm-hmm. talked that in that there are people in the Hall of Fame, or that that aren't getting into the Hall of Fame because of steroid use. But yet we don't hear about what about the doctors, the trainers, the the people that pushed these guys to use these things to get to that point. That's something we're not talking about with these MLB guys that are getting held up for drug use. Well, we finally are holding somebody accountable for providing and pushing people to use these substances in order to recover better or cover up their pain more. We need to start going, like, if you want... Honestly, if you want to end the use of steroids, the use of narcotics, the use of opioids in Major League Baseball, you know who you got to go after? The people pushing it. Eric K. being found guilty is a, is a step. But anybody in an organization found guilty of pushing drugs on people, pushing 
illegally sign stealing, pushing all of these things, those people are the people we need to hold accountable to. This is part of the reason why uh, I don't want to let go of some of the issues or some of the, the hatred that I have towards H the Houston Astros. Because we're not holding any of them accountable for their sign stealing. I think we need to hold accountable the organizations for the steroid use. MLB as a whole is attacking the players for using the steroids, but the players aren't the ones saying, if you listen to their testimony, it's not, oh, I started because I needed it and I wanted to use it and I have to have it. They started because their trainer's like, hey, you need to recover faster. Let me help you with that. Or their communication director said, hey, I know you're, you're, you're lost a little step. Let me help you recover that. That's where the problem is. And where do you see that being attacked in the MLB right now? We're, we, are treat, we are attacking the symptom, not the disease. The hmm. disease is the drug use, the steroid use, the sign stealing. All of those things are the disease. And we're just looking at the symptom and saying, well, you guys, you guys are the, you guys are the whole problem. This is the whole issue with all of it. No, the issue is the disease. Those in charge that are pushing these items, not the players themselves. The players feel like they're being forced into using it. And these, these guys, guys like Eric K are the reason that they feel like that. And pushers like Matt Harvey, who are dealing this are the reason that the, that these types of things have gotten into the league. That's the problem. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Rich, you can say whatever you want on it. Nope, I got nothing else to add to that. So it's, it's I mean, it's at least it's closure for the family, and hopefully that will, what happened to Eric K will maybe prevent other people from taking those actions. Yeah. Uh, that caused the death of an MLB player. It's and it's all, but at the same time, it's also sad that you took a player dying from an from a drug from an overdose. Yeah. To finally see some action on it. Yep. No, I totally agree. Okay, um, folks, we've been pushing it off for a while, but we need to talk about the NHL standings. Yes. So, yes, Rich, you have the predictions my... up, correct? Uh, yes, I have the predictions up. If you want to get the standings, up. I have the standings up. Where do you want to start? East or west? Um, let's start with the Atlantic Division. The we Atlantic Division picked... in the East. So, who did you put as your winner in the Atlantic Division? Uh, Mike, we both went with Tampa Bay, who is currently winning that division. Right now, uh, the Panthers are winning the division. All uh, right. And uh, out of Florida, uh, the Florida Panthers. In second place are the Tampa Bay Lightning. In third place right. are the Maple Leafs, and in fourth place are the Bruins. All right, Mike. Over in the Metropolitans, you picked the Capitals. I went with the Islanders. Okay. Well, uh, neither one of those picks are great. Mine is slightly better. Here's where we go. The Hurricane are in first place. The Rangers are in second, close second. The Penguins are in third. And the Capitals are in fourth. Mm. The Islanders are in sixth. Ooh. But that's... Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. That's based off of wins, not based off of points. Because technically the Penguins and the Capitals are in first place with points. The Hurricanes and the Rangers are in third and fourth, respectively, based on points. So okay. hockey does it a little bit differently. They the the f final standings are based on points, game points, not based on wins. So technically, the Lightning are in fifth place based mm. on points, but and second you're looking place at divisions, not not overall standings. Yes, yes. Okay. All right, over in the Central, Mike, you went with the Nashville Predators. I went with the Dallas Stars. But can you also give us how the Blackhawks are doing? Okay, well, uh, that's a lot there. Um, so based on game points, 
Game points only, the Blackhawks are in first. Based on wins, the Avalanche are in first. Okay. Um, game points, the Preds are in third. So it goes, we'll go based on game points. First is the Blackhawks, second is the Avalanche, third is the Preds, fourth are the Jets, fifth are the Coyote. Based on wins, it's Avalanche, Blues, Wilds, Preds, Stars, Jets, and Blackhawks. Okay. All right, in our final division, Mike, the Golden Knights. We both went with the Knights in the Pacific Division. They are in third place according to wins and fourth place, fifth place according to points. All right, and who leads the, that division in points? In points only, Mike. Points only, the Kraken. The Seattle Kraken, huh? Yeah. The expansion Kraken. So. Yeah. So neither of my, for the Stanley Cup, I went with the Islanders and the Stars. Neither of those teams are really doing really well at all right now. You went with the Golden Knights and the Lightning going for the Cup. So your pick is looking a little better than mine. And while we're looking at, while we're looking at the standings, Mike, why don't we take a look and see how the NBAs are doing? For the NBA, we only gave what teams would make the playoffs so okay. the eight teams in each playoffs okay you want to give those to me in the east okay so mike why don't you just give a yes or a no if they are current if they would currently make the playoffs okay if the season ended today um so we both put the new the nets they would barely by one they they are just in last place for the playoffs Okay. Uh, we both put the heat there, Mike. They are solidly in at first place. All right. Um, we both put the Celtics in there. They are in at sixth place. All right. The Raptors. Seventh. The Bucks. Fourth. The 76ers. Third. Uh, the Chicago Bulls. Second. All right. So here are the teams that we disagreed on, Mike. Would the Cavs make the playoffs if the season ended today? Yes, they okay. would. Would the Hawks make the playoffs? No, they would not. Who okay. picked the Cavs? You had the Cavs. I put the Hawks in there. Okay. So, uh, uh, right now, my picks would all make the playoffs. Yes, I have all. I have all but one. Going to the Western Conference, Mike. Okay. Um. We both put the Lakers. They are out of the playoffs as of today. Okay, the Suns. They are in first place. The Jazz. They are in fourth place. The Mavericks. They are in fifth place. The Warriors. Second. Uh, the Nuggets. Sixth. All right, so here are the teams that we disagreed on, Mike. You put the Clippers into the playoffs. Are they currently making it? Yes. Okay. Eighth um, place, by the way, eighth. Okay, you put the Oklahoma City Thunder there. 14th place. Not dun, All dun, right. Dun. All right, Mike. So the two teams that I picked different from you, the, the Memphis Grizzlies. They are in third place. All right. And the Blazers. 10th place. Okay. So we both got one team wrong in the West. Honestly, I'm actually shocked by that. Hmm. I think we both did. We're doing quite well. All right. We both did our homework at the beginning of the season. Or we had really good guesses. Hey, e either way, I'll take them. Yeah. Um, so I guess really the news that kind of come out of the NBA as I was driving home uh, yesterday was LeBron James and coming out and saying that he's going to play his final year with his son. Yeah. Bronny. Yep. Is that a surprise so, to anybody? I don't think it really surprises me, but let's say that a team like Oklahoma City or what's a the Cavs, the Cavs, somebody that's, like that. That's the fun one. Does do you I mean from what I've somewhat read about Bronny James is that 
if he didn't have LeBron James attached to him, he didn't have the James name or fam or recognition, is that he probably wouldn't be a first round pick. Yeah. But if you know that, yeah, all right, if I draft him, I'm probably going to have a good chance of getting LeBron for a year. You're like guaranteed you to get him for a him? year. Do you draft him? And do you think, I guess, what do you think is more likely? That the Lakers somehow find a way to trade for Bronny James so that they can keep LeBron. LeBron signs with whoever drafts him. Or does the James family do what Eli Manning and the Manning family did and and or Kobe saying that I'm not going to play for you. I'm only going to play for this team. Um, and they orchestrate a trade so that he plays on the team that his dad's already on. So a couple of things. I think LeBron is losing his swagger and losing his ability to say – to his sway to say he has to go to this team. He's already said he's willing to go to any team who drafts his son. I mean, he's even said he's willing to go back to Cleveland if that's what it takes. I don't know how well that will go over, but he's willing to do it. So, all that to say, I don't know. All right. For me, I think it... it I don't know if I would want to mortgage my future, especially if there are, if I'm picking in that top five and I know there's a better talent on the draft board than Bronny James Yeah. to maybe mortgage my future or put my rebuild on hold just so I can either trade LeBron or trade for LeBron if he's under contract with the Lakers still or sign him as a free agent because he'd mean. I think it'd be a. I don't think the players' association would want him to just sign for the minimum, the veterans' minimum, just so he can play one last year with his son. That wouldn't look good for anybody. But so you're you'd have to have the salary cap to be able to pay him for what for what he's worth. I think it. I don't think he cares. I think he just wants to play with his son. I, so I think he'll take. He would be willing to take the salary minimum. Um, I don't know how that's going to work. It's going to be interesting. We got, what, two years before that happens? Two years, unless the rules change. Yeah. So we'll see. So, I, it'll be it'll be fun to watch. Uh, it'll be nice to see a father-son play together. We haven't seen that in the NBA since... I don't remember. Let me look I don't up. know if it has. All right. So um, we're gotta be getting close to an hour mike um we're at 53 minutes so we still have time 53. for the for quick hits all right so let's let's put the xfl on hold um so uh supposedly the packers are coming to the front office are saying they never promised rogers a trade yeah is this their way of maybe extending the window of we're not gonna we're not just going to trade him because he says he wants to be traded. We we're going to trade him for a deal. That's also going to make sense for our team, not just to take care of the player, or is this their way of trying to have a more open discussion with Rogers to stay in green Bay for another one or two years? I think this is their first attempt at playing hardball. Let's see how it goes. Let's see what he's going to do when it comes down to time and let's use our sway to do what we can that's what i think it is yeah i mean i i almost think that maybe they're it's history repeating itself with brett Favre. oh yeah 100%. saying that oh i'm but yeah I'm, I'm gonna retire and then all of a sudden oh he he unretires and oh i want to go to this team and then then they turn around and deal them to the jets yeah i think that's what's going to happen i think it's going to be a terribly bad bad breakup. I think it's going to be bad for all sides, and I think that it's going to be. I think Aaron's going to come out looking, looking like a man. I hate. So, this term is used in both the greatest of all time and as someone who's just an idiot, the a goat. He's going to come out looking like an idiot 
because he's playing he's gonna play hardball they're gonna play hardball history shows that it actually works out better in green bay than it does in elsewhere yeah i mean hopefully the rogers camp is a little smarter this time around and coming out and saying this is what i want i'm not gonna come back yeah let me know where you can let me know your options for trading me and but hopefully the organization also includes him in on the discussion so it isn't like brett Favre where they traded him to the jets but from the packers perspective you just can't trade away the reigning mvp nope for for peanuts because he says i i want to go to this team specifically because then that that cuts your negotiating out from under you 100 percent. if he wants to go to denver is Denver going to offer a realistic trade package if they know they're the only team that Rodgers will play for if they trade for him? That's the that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. So, so hopefully there's some other options. Yep. Or or you know what? Maybe the Packers take the best offer they can because they know or maybe they play hardball of all right, if Rodgers isn't going to play for us, he's going to play for nobody. Yeah. And they call him on his bluff to see if he'll sit out the year. Yeah. Or retire. And uh, the final thing, Jawan Howard, he supposedly punched a guy. No, he did. It's on video. There's no supposedly about it. Okay. Now, he punched the assistant coach for Wisconsin. Supposedly is the why. They're saying it was over a timeout call and they got in an argument. I mean, we don't know exactly what why he did it, but that's the biggest question. He got in a fight. He started a fight. At the end of a game while they're in the shaking hands and saying blah, blah, blah. By the way, this is not his first headline-grabbing incident. Um, Was it last week against the Hawkeyes or two weeks ago against the Hawkeyes? Uh, One of his Michigan players knocked the ball out of the uh, Hawkeyes' hands and he walked out into the middle of the court and grabbed the ball? (laughs) Yeah, they said that he got to my boss. I was talking about it with my boss, and he was saying that uh, he had two technicals against Iowa. Yeah. And he's getting bent out of shape for Wisconsin doing a coachable moment. Yeah. They had they were up by 15. They put their they put the end of the bench guys into the lineup, the, the underclassmen or the scrubs, as he called them. And Michigan, with its full regular starter still on the floor, did a full court press. And so he called timeout so they could talk through a strategy of how to get across half court. That's yep. a good coachable moment. And it's what, moment. It was, it's what you would do if your regular guys were out there. So, I, yeah, I don't have a problem with the way that, that uh, was it Wisconsin? Yeah, it was Wisconsin. The Wisconsin coach handled it. He did the right, they did the right thing. Juwan Howard. Yeah. Now, I like the passion. But you got to be smart about it. Yeah, I mean, you could go up and have a heated discussion, but to say that, well, he he touched me in a way that I felt that I had to defend myself. Yeah, it's it, that you have if to you watch the video, it's yourself. Dumb. It's dumb. Yeah, I, I don't get that one. So Jawan Howard is out for the rest of the regular season, but he can come back for the postseason. Yeah, and he was fined a good amount of money as well as some of the players uh, players involved as well. Yep. Um. Yeah, I, I still don't get it. I didn't. I don't really follow college college basketball that much until the tournament. Um. So yeah, just sort of surprised. Yeah. I mean, Juwan Howard's been talking about being an up and coming college coach, yep. maybe even an NBA coach someday. And if he can't if handle he, himself in a professional manner, he could be hurting himself in the long term. Actually, I think that the passion is fine. Like, I don't have a, again. I don't have a problem with the passion. My problem is, as a college coach, you're expected to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. You're teaching these je- these young men to become men and get them ready for the NBA. As a pro, you're expected to win. That's all you're. That's. I mean, yes, in the in the college they want you to win, but your real job is teaching young men to become real men in the NBA. If you're throwing punches at the end of games for stupid stuff like that you're no longer doing that um but yeah we should get i should i'll, I'll ask david tomorrow uh his thoughts on ask it. david his thoughts on yeah because my my boss who is a hawkeye fan just said you know he used a different word but more of a safe 
word that I I prefer to use. Be, he's just a big jerk. Yep. He used a different word to describe Jawan Howard, but probably unprofessional or a jerk. Something so. like a donkey? Um, no, it's something else. I'll tell you off air. Oh, okay. I, I worse than that. Okay. Well, with... I don't know, maybe not worse than that. Just something I don't. Yeah, no, no problem. Anyway, so that is our show this week. Rich, we do have one shout out, a like shout Ooh. out, a reaction okay. shout out. Solomon Stroop liked the video. Uh, he was watching a little bit earlier. So shout out to Solomon for liking the video. If you are looking to watch us live, you want to be in the comments, you want to ha- join the discussion, that's what the Facebook chat is for. We are here for you. Uh, check us out Saturday mornings, roughly around 1030. Today was a little late because we did because I had some stuff going on. Um, but normally 1030 on our Facebook page, like us. You will If you turn on the notifications on Facebook, you'll be notified when we go live. You can join us, make your comments, let us know your thoughts on our conversation, and we'll read them online. Rich, if people want to listen to us while they're driving around, what should they do? Uh, you know, you can download us anywhere where you find all your other podcasts that you listen to. Just search for Balls and Sticks. I know for sure we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, probably anywhere, everywhere but iHeartRadio, I think, at this point. I'm working on that one. You're working on that one, okay. Or I mean, there, you can always go to YouTube or Facebook and just click on click on a past episode and just click the play button. And you can also take us anywhere with you as well, um, doing it that way as well. And also, uh, we'll give a shout out if you comment on our poll questions every week as well. Yep. With that being said, Rich, what's it time to do? Mike, let's go ahead and roll the outro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast with your hosts, Mike and Rich.